Oh, hello and good afternoon. I welcome you to today's Trading Spotlight webinar with a very, very interesting topic, I think. Five things to invest in, respectively, during a recession. Um, yeah, some of you will most likely um, 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 wonder what, what all this will be about here today. And um, first of all, a little introduction, probably. Uh, so, I mean, we are about to enter some difficult times, let's call it, I'd say, uh, with all this, um, uh, yeah, <laughs> pandemic craziness, let's say. Um, and uh, the potential, not just um, 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 developments from a society perspective, but also especially from an economic perspective. What to expect? Um, there have been plenty of signs already uh, before um, the uh, corona lockdown and everything around this um, in 2019 already, when there was an inversion of the uh, yield curve in the US. What does this mean? That means nothing more than that uh, two-year yields are higher than 10-year yields, for example. And what's the result or why is that? This is because of the um, restrictive monetary policy, in this case, from the uh, US Central Bank, the Fed, in this case, so um, um, hiking rates. And uh, then um, hiking rates in the short run, pushing yields in the short run higher, but market participants in the long run becoming skeptical about the overall economic outlook. So uh, what does this mean? Well, that means that um, they expect for the years to come um, uh, um, a softer economic growth, we can call this, I think. And uh, the softer economic outlook here in this context means that you are um, uh, demanding um, yeah, what, what can we call this? Uh, safe haven assets. I think that's a probably good way to put it. So uh, US Treasury uh, uh, notes, for example, so longer dated Treasury notes, you're buying these. And uh, since there is a negative correlation, you push yields lower. While in the short run, you're selling these uh, T notes and invest in um, higher yields or um, yeah, higher yields um, um, investments, let's say, or in, 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 in more attractive um, asset classes, as for example, equities and all this. And uh, so this could be seen already at the beginning of, um, uh, or not just at the beginning, but I think the second half of 2019, I think in August, if I'm not mistaken, August 2019, there was this inversion of the yield curve. And uh, then, yeah, the pandemic hit and uh, the lockdown uh, was the result. And um, so even though just several minutes ago, some, something like 30 minutes ago, uh, non-farm payrolls were released, quite strong numbers. And um, all in all, it seems as if uh, um, especially the U.S. Um, um, economy is picking on momentum, bullish momentum again. Um, still, we are facing some, some serious headwinds. And the question now is um, if we are probably about to see an extension on the upside, especially when it comes to equities, probably um, we are probably currently seeing just a um, um, mainly liquidity driven rally, um, which has nothing really to do with um, economic growth in general. The question is, um, well, well, where do we invest? What should we uh, invest in? And uh, this is exactly what today's um, topic will be about. And um, before we start, a uh, very important in this context, um, Admirals saw a rebranding. Uh, no, I'm sorry, the other way around. Admiral Markets is currently rebranding that way around. And um, you will find um, in the future now admirals.com. So it's not yet. So right now you can still um, um, find your way to Admiral Markets by typing in admiralmarkets.com. But um, all in all, there's a rebranding taking place. And the reason for that is, and this is um, something here you can find the next slide. The main reason for this um, is that. Uh, once um, um, Admiral Markets started, at um, 20 years ago, in fact, um, they, they started out in the FX and CFD brokerage, especially, and made it um, to one of the top financial service providers here in, the, uh, in this industry with um, probably one of the most competitive offerings, as far as I'm concerned and, and so far as I know. Um, and uh, now they increase their um, uh, overall product line, let's say. And for example, um, um, offer credit cards and uh, will continue to offer more and more financial services. 
um, beside the FX and CFD um, um, and brokerage. You can also have, you already have the opportunity to invest um, um, in physical stocks, for example, long-term investments. This is something which is also of interest right now here today. Um, ETFs, you can buy ETFs via um, um, the Invest solution, for example. So there's um, plenty of um, um, asset classes you can invest in. And um, on top of that, there are other financial services which um, Admirals will uh, now offer in the future from now on. And thus the rebranding, or this is one of the main reasons for the rebranding. Further information, admirals.com, admiralmarkets.com. And uh, please check out the website. Um, I can basically, based on my my personal um, experience um, from a broker's perspective, highly recommend it. And um, so, what we want to now focus on is today's agenda. So um, I skipped here now uh, the slide, by the way, where I introduce myself. So just um, we're gonna make it quick, quick uh, uh, here in this context. So my name is Jens. I'm located in Berlin, Germany. I'm uh, in the financial industry for um, nearly 20 years now, over 15 at least. I started out um, as an um, um, a trainee and employee with the bank that was after my I finished school and then I uh, decided to um, study mathematics economics and beside of that I was um, uh, I, I wanted to be a trader in fact so that was um, what I what I just learned after um, uh, going through all the different departments um, during my my traineeship in the, um, in the bank and uh, so I uh, got lucky I uh, my former girlfriend her father knew someone who was a trader at a stockbroker and thus I was uh, introduced um, to the stockbroker and I really learned trading professionally here at a, at a professional trading desk um, that were my first steps and uh, yeah now after after 10 years, I, I decided to take it um, to go out on my own and um, work as a self-employed. And in this context, also the partnership here with with admirals and um, we want to now nevertheless dig into uh, today's topic and not focus so much on my my career and how i got started in trading um so the topics we want to cover today is first of all the question what is the recession um this is first of all important to introduce i think um i mean i did already um quite technical but still an introduction um then we want to um, um focus on the uh, core sector stocks, which are of interest here, um, once uh, where, when you want to want to invest during a, um, a recession, which um, um, sectors to focus on. We also want to uh, put a focus on reliable dividend stocks. So um, you can already see that that we are obviously um, we will find our way into the value area. Um, and uh, probably uh, not focus that much on growth stocks, even though we will see that um, some growth stocks are still part of, um, 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 a, say, um, recession-proof um, um, portfolio in this context. Um, um, and here, for example, entertainment plays an important role. But um, the thing is uh, that this is already something we can also see. Um, if you look at the market's current development, so probably um, you've, you've seen what, what happened in the S&P 500, for example, made it the first time above 4,000 points now before the Easter weekend. Um, and uh, while the um, uh, NASDAQ is, yeah, not really that strong, let's see what, what will happen in the, in the next week. Um, in this context, um, I um, um, gave um, a presentation yesterday also here in, in Germany. Um, where I said, well, probably we're about to um, break higher in the NASDAQ 2, which could be driven by um, good delivery numbers from uh, Tesla in this context. So probably there will be, since Tesla is in the focus of many market participants, um, probably this is um, yeah, creating some, some, some bust and the spillover effect probably, which will then uh, potentially also drive um, uh, growth stocks higher again. So numbers um, uh, came in really good. In fact, I think they expected delivery numbers to be at 170,000 or something, 172, um, and came in about one, 180, which is um, a strong beat, in fact. And um, so that being said, probably um, um, we will now see kind of a catch-up move in, in growth stocks. But all in all, we can dev definitely see for the last one and a half months, I'd say, one and a half, two months, um, that there's certainly some some um, uh, focus Focus on value stocks, while um, there was some heavier selling on um, uh, growth stocks in this context. Probably this is also a sign that uh, market participants are now um, seeing some kind of um, reallocation in this context. And probably one of the reasons why we should be really, really careful when it comes to um, the overall economic outlook and, and, and too much optimism in this context. We also want to have a look here at um, um, real estate and how to buy real estate, even though 
I have to say when looking at the developments here in Germany, and I think we are still um, um, cheap compared to, to international standards. When I look over to, to, for example, the UK, London here, or Paris, for example, um, but also here in Germany, uh, prices um, um, have, have gone a little too high, let's put it that way, to be attractive um, from a risk reward perspective, even for longer term investments um, to, to uh, consider buying real estate. Um, certainly, we also want to focus again, we did it several times, but um, we have to focus this um, precious metals, which are also part of, um, of, of, of uh, yeah, recession proof um, um, portfolio. And this is probably the most important thing and very underestimated for many, um, invest in yourself. I think this is the crucial part, in fact. And um, I'm a big, big friend um, and, and, and big fan of, of investing in myself. And that has become even more true over the last um, months and, and probably the last year, especially. Yeah, probably last months, two year, two, one and a half, two years, in fact. Um, and I will give you some, some ideas on where you can invest in yourself and uh, which uh, place, where not just place, but pay also in the long run certainly the biggest um, 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 dividend and the biggest yield um, um, of all um, the, the um, um, different aspects we want to cover in today's webinar. So first of all let's start out and answer the question what is a recession? Let me just have a look here. Yes 100%. This is um, yeah. This is a very interesting. Before we start, um, this is a very interesting um, question here. Can everyone without a career journey like me, um, so starting at a professional a trading desk and everything, um, be a successful trader? Um, I I want to put it probably the other way around. Um, I know um, or I don't know that many people who started out as a professional who are still profitable traders um, after they finish their their um, let's call it professional trading career at an institutional trading desk and then went out on themselves. Um, as retail traders, because um, you have usually different, yeah, different, um, especially sources when it comes to um, uh, information, for example, uh, data access. You you have not the risk you have as a as a retail tri um, trader as a as a if if you you can consider yourself a, a prop trader if you want. So I mean, there's also um, um, prop trading desks where you share profits with with your um, with with the desk or the company you hired you which hired you that way run. Um, but all in all, um, uh, the thing is that um, even if I, I, I'd say that um, uh, it's harder to be a professional retail trader, make money that way and not starting out at the professional trading desk, um, even though um, it's first of all worth it. And second, um, it's also something uh, which which needs a complete different mindset. So it's not just um, um, technical things, technical aspects, which are of interest here, but it's also that you have to have a complete different mindset and a mindset which um, you you develop over time. And uh, it's it's personally, I, I would say it has nothing to do with, um, 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 let's say, um, intelligence or with um, which great um, or which, 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 which university degree you, you achieved or something like that. It's, it's really like um, it comes mainly, it all comes down. And this is also something which we want to cover at the end of this presentation, invest in yourself. Um, it comes down to having a growth mindset. So um, you can be um, um, a professional trader but still be a fixed mindset guy, let's call it. Um, and uh, that will definitely lead uh, to, the, to a disastrous outcome once you go out on yourself and try to be a professional trader yourself and then try to make it on your own. Um, even or if someone is completely new to this matter um, and, and starts out and has a growth mindset, he has a greater chance of success. Um, even though he has no real, um, um, let's call it professional background, again, with the study um, um, of, of mathematics in this case, or quantitative um, 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 field, or um, um, a traineeship within a bank, or let's say, um, what do we have in addition to that? professional trading desk probably and also something certainly certainly there will be um uh, there's input you receive which is um of high value and and probably something um you won't get for free let's call it or you have to pay a certain price for that even probably by 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 learning it uh, trading in a, in a certain way and just finding out that this doesn't work um, um and, and this is something the money you can you can in some to some extent really safe if you if you have this this professional um, um, um trading desk um, um, experience, but still, I, I'd, I'd say that um, probably it's even better if you do not have this. But it, it's come, 
it's coming down to the to the mindset in this context. Um, yeah, I hope this this, this answers the question. Um, so, what is a recession? What is a recession? So. Um, it's another technical way to, to define it. Um, I talked about the yield curve inversion, um, which is an indication, by the way. So it's not that um, a recession is defined by a yield curve inversion in this context. It's just an indication that we are about to see a recession. Um, purely technical speaking, um, a recession is um, uh, the, the circumstance that you have two consecutive quarters of negative economic growth and thus it is an extended period of a significant decline in economic um, activity so when looking at numbers um you we could now check out um the, the website for example a trading economics and there we can see that uh, last year um in the second or in the first quarter in the second quarter um there there was these two consecutive consecutive um, um quarters of negative economic growth i think th there were also some countries out there probably um who faced um three consecutive quarters um and I have to say it depends a little, I think, um, on, on how you how you define economic activity. I have to some uh, extent the impression or that probably some um, uh, countries are a little more flexible when it comes to um, deliver numbers on their economic activity. Um, but all in all, this is the technical definition of this. Um, so two consecutive um, um, quarters of negative economic uh, growth. And uh, we characterize recessions um, by, um, yeah, faltering confidence on the part of consumers and businesses. So weakening employment, falling real incomes, and weakening sales and production. Something we can definitely face right now. So I think everyone um, 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 can at least, even though you can look at numbers, and that's what, I, what I'm talking about. So numbers which are which are published, um, and 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 can yeah, show you some kind of economic growth or something, or um, some kind of business activity. This is probably not what you feel right now. If you look around, if you talk to friends, if you talk to, um, 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 if you're allowed to talk to them, that's something, something I think I have to say. So if, you, if you're not allowed to meet anyone, uh, depression uh, or, or negative feelings, and all this is um, common, I think. And, and I know plenty of guys, um, in fact, which were really happy and, and which were just um, in their zone to me, I, 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 would, I would say. And... Um, <clears throat> who got completely overrun by the developments of the last um, 12 months. And uh, that's, that's something um, which, which you can, that can also see when it comes to a consumption, for example. So, um, or in my case, well, let, let's put it differently. So I, for example, I, I like to dress up, let's say. So sometimes it's, it's not that, I'm, that I have, um, um, like, I don't know, as many shoes as my wife. Oh, no, that, that's not true. Probably I have more shoes than my wife, but <laughs> you see what I'm talking about. So um, usually I, I love to wear suits, for example. And then I had the uh, decision I, I was thinking about. Um, therefore, for example, I save some money at, at each month. So to, to not run into a store and, and just um, uh, say, here's my credit card. And now I bought, buy everything which is um, 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 which is seen here. But what I usually do is I save some money at each at the end of each month. And um, then once a year, I say, well, I now take the money and I go to my, um, uh, um, to my, to my um, uh, tailor in this case, and I wanna have a really nice suit. So that's something I really love to do. And uh, at the end of last year, that was in November, something okay yeah i think november november december um it was again it was time let's say so it was like okay let's let's go out buy a suit have some fun go together with your wife and 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 she's um i'm looking um and and, and giving you some 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 thoughts on 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 your on your um, um on, on, the, on the on the on the style in general what you look for and at the end of last year in november there was no such thing as that i wanted to go out and wanted to buy a suit um it was like well, no, it doesn't make sense. That doesn't mean that I didn't take the money, but I invested it myself, in fact. I, I um, um, invested the money, which I usually use to, to buy a suit. Um, and this is just a small um, 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 anecdote, I think. I think um, we probably know some, or probably ourselves, uh, that, that we're just not that motivated to consume anymore and, and, and to, to go on vacation or something like that. I mean, currently here in Germany at least, um, people really, they, they talk about, let's go on vacation and uh, have some fun. 
Well, the thing is that if I go on vacation, I want to have fun. I, I, wanna, I don't want to want to think about what will happen in the next six months or something like that. And this, this kind of, let's call it depressive mood, this is something which is also weighing on the overall economic activity. And um, so you can't really make this up by numbers. So even if numbers are improving, like employment situation and that stuff, um, the whole overall, the overall sentiment is just negative. And, and it, you just can feel that. So it's not just that you, that you have to um, have clear numbers, as we have now with two consecutive um, 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 quarters of negative economic growth in this context, but it's really also it's it's a sentiment you can you can just feel, and. Um, <clears throat> That being said, that can also be seen when looking at uh, markets in this context. So during recessions, for example, investors tend to sell riskier holdings and move into safer securities, such as government debt, as I already said. And that's one of the reasons why, for example, longer term yields are dropping. Um, and uh, so now the thing is that this is something which we cannot see when looking at the markets. So when looking at um, current developments, especially in, in, in uh, the S&P 500, making it to and above 4,000 points, or also the NASDAQ, which nearly doubled from its um, um, March 2020 lows, for example, um, you will say, well, obviously, market is, is really... Um, they, they want to buy probably it's a, it's a special environment so this is something which is which is not really common but probably also the result out of um, what we what we get to see in this context um, monetary policy wise I mean if uh, or the government also if the government goes out and says hey here's a check and uh, you have let's say in case of the US 1500 2000 USD and uh, you can spend it um, people, yeah, what, what will they do with the money? So if every store is closed, well, they, they, they uh, yeah, buy stuff on Amazon or um, they, they go out and say, well, I open an account um, with, a, with a brokerage um, in the US. Um, it's, a, it's not a real competitor, even though I don't need to name the company or the broker. Um, but everyone can see that, that people are now going out um, in, invest them or it's not really true they, they open an account and they just um, gamble around with it um, that's one of the reasons especially in the current environment and if you see then this 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 um, yeah what I am already talked about this inflow of capital into a growth um, um, ETFs like the ARK ETF from uh, Kathy Wood, for example, um, who is also a very heavy investor in uh, Tesla shares, for example, Tesla itself. It's it's like um, it's it's a it's a it's a um, it's a it's a process. It's like like a circle which um, moves faster and faster and faster. And the low um, 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 yield environment and the massive liquidity. Um, um, in um, flow here, or the, the the injection of more and more liquidity from central banks, usually usually um, is a is a yeah, it's finding its ways into equities, for example. So currently, we see a rise in equity prices. The only question is if it, if it's really a sustainable move or it's only and purely liquidity driven, not really a fundamentally driven. Um, but all in all, what you Rather sooner than later, probably um, we'll see. I'm I'm not seeing we I'm not saying we we are we are about to see a crash. But for example, last week I um, had a had a client who was um, um, wondering what to do, um, especially now wondering whether it's probably time to buy stocks, right? So or invest in. Uh, it's it's not really investing. I said, well, currently you should play the momentum on the upside and. Uh, we, we, we are probably about to see a next leg up. So I could really imagine that, that the S&P will move up to 4,100, uh, yeah, 4,200 points. But um, still, the lower, especially volatility drops right now, um, the, the cheaper it gets to um, uh, insure your portfolio, I think the more I am motivated to say, well, I'm willing to buy at least some insurance and some volatility. Um, volatility is, is beginning to get cheap again. So we dropped in the VIX below 20 points. And uh, this is probably we're about to see another, like lower down to 10 points and even below that, but then you, you at least were insured. I think once um, there is this, this moment when volatility picks up again, I was really surprised to be honest, when we saw the developments um, in the Suez um, um, uh, channel. Some probably have seen that one week ago, um, there was a, um, uh, th th there was a um, blocking taking place of, yeah, in Germany, the word is blockade. So there was a, a ship which which um, uh, made it made it impossible to pass the Suez uh, uh, Channel here, 
and um, couldn't be moved. And that was something which surprised me massively because this is usually something which could easily uh, result in kind of deleveraging taking place, even though the current environment is not as tense as it was one year before, um, once we saw the first um, lockdown taking place. And then um, in this context, uh, people really started to, 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 to fear that they can't pay their rent anymore because people are not coming into, into their businesses, for example, or into, into their, their um, 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 showrooms or that they can't really sell their stuff anymore and there's no real cash flow which then still means that you have to to pay your rent and therefore you need to liquidate other assets like shares or equity um, um, stocks in this context or also gold for example gold dropped massively during that time or also precious metals in general and um so that being said, it, it was kind of um, um interesting to see let's say and it, it shows that there needs to be um um a heavier, um, a trigger event probably. But what I what I definitely want to say in this context is, um, I have the feeling, at least the feeling, that there's there's some tension building, and it probably makes sense to think about a sharp drop in equities, where at least I I can I, I spot it to some extent when looking at the developments in growth and and, and value um, stocks, then for example. So. Um, so in this context, we come to the next bullet point here in the slide. So equity investing in this case involves when it comes to recession proof portfolios, high quality companies with long histories since these companies tend to hold up better in recessions. So um, something we could also sum up as favoring value titles over growth titles. Um, we will look at these value titles in the next slide and in this context. But um, this is one of the reasons why, for example, such heavy um, uh, drops we've seen, we've encountered one week ago. Um, you've probably seen it in FIAC, um, the ticker symbol with a massive drop. We've seen it in, in Baidu, even though I have to say from a growth perspective, um, I think Baidu has some further upside potential, um, especially it was massive oversold so i'm not really surprised to see the stock moving higher nearly 30 percent within one week um but when it comes to fiat for example we're also companies like tesla probably i mean they have a they, they, they have a quite great growth outlook let's put it that way and i could imagine uh that that tesla is probably about to rather sooner or later enter the top five of the um um most valuable companies in the world after Apple, Amazon, and all that. But still, uh, right now, when looking at the fundamentals from a classic perspective, I think it's it's imaginable, let's say, that once we see um, uh, acceleration when it comes to rotation from growth into value, that also titles stocks like like Tesla could be, could see a massive massive drop um, and 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 be um, a victim here of the uh, current um, elevated stock price in this context. But all in all, let's sum this up. Um, when it comes to to investing during a recession, um, it needs um, or it follows the the uh, um, um, idea that you say, well, I look for titles I can not just trust, but um, who have a long history and who have um, proven to um, uh, stay in the game, let's put it that way, um, also during recessions, um, then a growth title, which just went public, I don't know, something like 12 months ago or something. Um, still, diversification during a recession is very important and includes not just fixed income products here, but also consumer staples and low risk investments. And now um, what we want to do is we want to, first of all, here seek out core sectors. And uh, usually we can say that the following sectors do web very well during recessions. So first of all, healthcare. I think this is self-explaining, especially in the current environment. Um, a classic healthcare um, 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 investment here, CVS. We don't go into the fundamentals of these companies. It's just an, an example to give you an idea on what to look for. If, you, if you're right now looking at your portfolio and say, okay, I have a portfolio and currently I'm, I don't know, 90% long in, in, in Tesla. And probably it's, probably you, you should start to think about what could happen. And um, I don't wanna, don't wanna dump all my Tesla shares, but probably I'd say, well, it's time to diversify the portfolio a little because um, the um, um, headwinds uh, are probably about to increase over the course of the next, let's say 12 to 24 months. That's at least, if you come to this conclusion, that's the way I wanna put it. So I am of this, I, I have this opinion, but still I also see people saying, well, I, I don't really see um, such a, such a, um, um, a massive downturn 
and on not just in growth stocks, I where in, in growth stocks in general, I expect a next sharper, even sharper, like up. Um, and then in this context, if you're looking for for yield, if you look for for performance, well, certainly you're better off to invest most of your um 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 um, a money than in growth stocks like Tesla, like, or I, I take Tesla, but you can also say we can invest it in, in the like, competitor. If you want to stay in the electric vehicle a sector, we want to have a webinar on this, by the way. Um, I think next week, if I'm not mistaken, I think next week on, on a Wednesday. Um, and uh, here we want to want to look at then also at the Chinese competitor in this case, NIO, for example, but also XPath. But this is just the electric vehicle um, of sector. You can also say NVIDIA, whatever. Um, still, if you want to have a recession-proof um, um, portfolio, it should consist of healthcare stocks like CVS, food, also should be self-explaining, especially um, this is something I really fear, to be honest, uh, that there will be kind of a um, stronger inflationary move, let's put it that way. Uh, but this is probably also due to the fact that I'm German. And if, if you mention inflation here in Germany, this is like a red flag and everyone is going crazy after um, 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 inflation. That's one of the reasons, probably you followed also the monetary policy from the ECB. One of the reasons why, um, especially Germans are hawkish are because of all the things which happened nearly 100 years ago during the, um, um, I, think, I don't know if it's in English, it's, it's also Weimar Republic, but all the developments there then leading to the uh, darkest, um, 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 darkest, darkest period of, of German history in general. So the uh, Third Reich in this case. And, and this is one of the reasons why Germans are very, very um, um, scared when it comes to inflation. This is one of the reasons probably why I'm scared about this too, because if, you're, if you get this over and over again during your um, uh, career in school, well, um, um, you can't really help it here in this context, but um, food recession proof, Carrefour, for example, um, um, is a company which, which you could take into your portfolio then. Um, we have also consumer staples, and in this context, Coca-Cola, for example, Colgate, um, Colgate Palmolive, I'm not sure, Colgate Palmolive, <laughs> whatever. Um, so this is also a, something which is which is of, of high interest in this context, probably especially Coca-Cola. That's one of the reasons um, I mentioned the company here is due to um, um, the attractive dividend um, um, you get there. Basic transportation, UPS. I'm not sure if Amazon, I think Amazon is also in this industry. So probably um, we can also add um, Amazon here. Um, and then, and this is probably, this is the interesting part of this. Um, so I think until here, uh, it's, it's self-explaining. Healthcare, food, consumer staples, basic transportation. I think this is self-explaining. This is a recession proof. The companies I mentioned here are in this industry, in this business for, I'd say a century probably. Um, and in and, and this context, so this is self-explaining. What's probably interesting now, if you want to focus on something like growth, then you shouldn't underestimate the importance of entertainment during a recession. So uh, because people want to be entertained, if you if you're sitting at home right now, then streaming services like Netflix, but also companies like Disney, for example, I just mentioned Netflix here. Um, these are companies um, which are of interest right now because people want to get want to be entertained. Um, if, you, if you have a home gym, for example, um, uh, companies like um, uh, Peloton, for example, or um, here, we could also, even though it's not really entertainment, but, but companies like Zoom, for example, um, gaming stocks, Roblox just went uh, public. We want to have a look at gaming stocks also in the uh, next hot topic web or upcoming hot topic webinar. First, we we'll focus on electric vehicles, and then the uh, one after that, I will focus on gaming stocks, Roblox, but also um, um, uh, ATVI. It's, it's ATVI. Sorry, it's like uh, I just missed the name. Um, so, but gaming stocks in general. So, entertainment is also something which is of interest. So, what, why do I say that? Why do I mention that? Well, because I already mentioned growth plays a, still a role, and we could be on the wrong side here, but you have at least some kind of growth component within your portfolio. And probably, even though Disney is, is probably um, a little difficult to be considered a growth stock, but um, in this context, probably Disney is about to at least put a step into this growth area. And um, so that's um, on, on uh, the core sector stocks you should invest in during the session. One second, please. <coughs> Okay, so then um, we want to focus on reliable dividend stocks. 
And um, we probably, you should remember, uh, we, we had a webinar here on dividend stocks in general, and we talked about the so-called dividend aristocrats. Um, I want to, one sec, oh, I'm sorry, no, that, that's, that, that doesn't make sense. One second, please. I, I take it from here. So uh, this is a link to a Wikipedia article to give you a further explanation. Um, dividend aristocrats. Uh, these are companies, I'm not sure about the time span, but I think we are really talking about um, pl plenty of years, 20 years or something. Companies which continuously, even through recessions um, um, in the past, increase their dividend. And um, so that's, that's uh, first of all, the first market you should look at or not market but 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 stocks you should look at because they continue to pay um a solid or generate a solid cash flow during a recession probably you lost your job or probably there will be kind of um developments which mean that there will be um, a cut in your in your pay something like that and um having a portfolio which continuously still continues to pay um, an attractive dividend in this context is certainly important. And um, there's now two ways to uh, invest in dividend stocks. So um, the first is through classic mutual funds. Oh, sorry, that's, that's too much here. First of all, this. So first of all, through uh, mutual funds, such as index funds or exchange traded funds, so the ETFs, um, and these ETFs should hold dividend stocks. And uh, here, for the, for example, we have the um, um, Spider S&P Euro Dividend Aristocrats use its ETF. So it's um, short, it's a EUDV. Um, this is the um, a ticker symbol uh, where you can find this um, 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 ETF on admirals, admirals.com. So once you, you go via the um, um, products tab and there you can, you can then look for ETFs. If you type in EUDV, you will already find here um, um, the ETF, this, this spider, Euro Dividend Aristocrats um, use its uh, ETF. You can also just look for dividend in general and then we'll see a list of, of dividend stocks in this context. So this is one way to do it. The other is to um, directly and um, directly buy and invest in individual dividend stocks, especially Exxon Mobil, for example, AT&T in this context. So two companies which are also paying quite attractive dividends. Um, so they don't have this growth aspect in it and are not performing extraordinarily well in such an environment or in the environment, especially we found ourselves in over the last 12 months with all this liquidity access from the Fed. But um, in general, they are really recession-proof stocks. That doesn't mean that they are not dropping in value, but you're not holding them in your portfolio to profit from the um, 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 capital gains in this context or the, the, the growth of, 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 of the, of the um, share price, but it's about the dividend in this context and continuously generate um, the cash flow component or the cash flow in general um, and have something to pay your bills during a recession. And... Um, during that, that's also something. Uh, during a recession, so-called blue chip companies can play out their strengths. So what we want to do is, um, in another webinar, we want to focus on blue chips in general. That will be another um, um, trading spotlight webinar. And um, now, what we want to do right here is we want to we want to answer the question where we want to focus on why is a blue chip attractive, especially during a recession? Well, um, first of all, they are seen, blue chip companies are seen um, less volatile as less volatile investments because they have institutional status in the economy. Uh, thus, it will, uh, there's a simple saying saying, well, these companies will likely survive this recession. So they won't go down, they won't go um, um, bankrupt in this context. And in addition to that, they are also high highly liquid um, since they are frequently traded in the market by individual and institutional investors alike and they have little to no debt. There's also something we want to uh, focus on when it comes to investments in precious metals in this context. So here we want to we want to um, um, look at a component which we call free cash flow yield in this context but this is um, in the uh, not upcoming slide but in the in the slide after the investments here in real estate. Um, so there's two sides of the coin. I already mentioned it. Um, so the thing is, first of all, personally, I think, and that's one of the reasons I'm not really 
I, I don't really like this. I, I know that it's part, it should be, it must be part, in fact, of um, such, a, such a webinar, such a topic, investing through a recession. But still, looking at the current real estate prices and the developments we've seen there, um, I consider risk reward wise an investment in real estate not that attractive. I also, I, I could be even um, um, harder here. I, I, even if I, I consider buying real estate, I wouldn't buy it in Germany, to be honest. Um, so, due to all the political developments taking place right now and uh, the uh, rhetoric starting to, let's call it heat up. Uh, that's probably a fair way to put it. And it's, um, uh, it, it's, um, it, it's really scary what, what's going on here in Germany. So um, it's, yeah, it's, it, it's really, it's, 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 it's tough. Sometimes it's really tough. And I'm, uh, I, I want to say I, I don't own real estate and I'm happy that I do not own real estate. Um, I was, um, uh, I, there was a time when I was, when I was way younger. Um, I, I really love to, to have friends and, 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 um, it wasn't that I was jealous, but I, I looked up, especially to their to their parents, um, if they uh, came up and say, "Well, we we have a house and look at the nice garden," and that was something like that that has some some charm to it. Uh, there's no question about that. But um, this has completely changed, especially here when it comes to Germany. Um, uh, that has completely changed because um, these developments we currently see here, it all it also comes with. Um, uh, yeah, kind of, kind of um, inflexibility, let's call it. So, uh, I mean, you could easily sell your house right here, right now. Uh, but the thing is that um, it, 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 it's just from a risk reward perspective, again, it doesn't really feel like, um, it, it doesn't seem so attractive anymore. So the feeling, the positive feeling you probably have if you have your own garden, for example, is not um, enough to um, um, overcome this, this risk reward perspective and, and saying, well, it's an investment in my future uh, or an investment for over the next 30 years. I don't even know whether I'll stay in Germany for the next 30 years, to be honest, given all the developments we currently face. And, and that's one of the reasons why I'm, I'm stepping back from this. And uh, so the thing is that especially over the last 10 years, um, this hype happened. <clears throat> But all in all, I was skeptical, especially around developments around the euro, uh, eurozone, respect of the euro in general, and that's one of the reasons why I, um, I, I, I didn't really it didn't feel right. And still, I can I can understand that that there are people out there, my brother, for example, buying a house right now, um, everything cool, so completely fine. But um, all in all, I. I, I'd say this is not flexible for the current environment in which we um, um, find ourselves, even though it's a recession proof. So no question about that. So it's definitely something you, you should consider. Um, and especially if I, if, 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 if I own real estate, if I already have a house or um, flats or whatever, um, I think it's a perfect investment, similar to dividend stocks, probably even better than that, since not just it's working from home, but you also have um, this, this continuous cash flow generated by uh, the rents, which are paid once you, once you um, hand, it, hand your, 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 your property out to someone else. Um, plus, in addition to that, you have working from home, um, um, the, 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 not flexibility, but if you have a work at home approach in this context, um, currently gaining prominence and, and individual safety in this context, um, <clears throat> this is of prime importance and, and, and is attractive. So also during a recession, even if prices in, in uh, um, real estate drop. So what this means is, <clears throat> if there's no real need to sell uh, right now, if you own real estate and it's really your house, you, you're not in debt and you're not um, 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 have to, to pay back mortgages or whatever, but it's yours. Um, if, this is, if this is the case, um, I, yeah, I, I'd hold this investment. Certainly, I, I'd hold it. And then even if, it's, if it was in Germany, um, I, I, and I'd just hold it because I think it's, again, recession-proof and something which is of um, um, importance during your session and should be part in, in this context. But if you have now the choice, shall I buy a house or not, I'd be in the um, 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 uh, um, um, league of those saying, well, I step back from this investment. Um, instead, I probably go for something more flexible, let's say, um, and consider purchasing precious metal investments, especially. So um, 
This does not necessarily only include buying physical precious metals, which will, in general, usually perform very well in an environment of lower yields, and especially rising, rising, rising debt right now. So probably you have seen the developments and the announcement from Joe Biden in the U.S. Then, um, when it came here to this Corona relief package, when it came to now this infrastructure package, um, he agreed on, and um, this has to be financed and will be financed. And if uh, if 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 they don't find i mean they will certainly find some at least uh, buyers um of of their of their bonds but if if they're if these if these um buyers are, are not stepping up and we have seen i mean that might sound a little uh, dark now but we have seen that several weeks ago at the beginning of, of march if you if you have followed the price action especially in the bond markets there have been kind of um strange developments um, during some auctions um, when it came to seven-year U.S. bonds, and there was no real demand for them. And that was one of the reasons why um, um, uh, yields in, in U.S. treasuries spiked higher at the beginning of March. Um, it, I'm not sure whether I would say, well, kind of radioactive tendency in, in U.S. bonds here, but um, it's at least that, that, that the demand is dropping here. And you can also see on another, um, um, from another perspective, investments, investments or speculative um, um, investments, let's call it, in Bitcoin, for example, shooting through the roof. There's certainly a reason for that. There's a continuous and, and building this mistrust in the US dollar, probably as a world reserve currency. And um, so with this being said, the lender of last resort will be the US central bank, the Fed. And once they, or if they continue to increase their balance sheet as they currently do, um, well, what you will usually see is not just Yields continues to drop, continue, continuously to drop, but also in addition to that, um, um, asset classes like precious metals to rise. But in addition to that, we talk about cash flow a lot here. Um, um, I also like to uh, remind you that investments in gold mining stocks are of high interest due to their rising free cash flow yield. So that's what I what I mentioned. Um, so let me just probably here get you this this chart. It's from uh, Crescut uh, Capital LLC. So it's um, a chart I screenshotted from Twitter, and um, the uh, free cash flow yield um, is a financial solvency ratio that compares the free cash flow per share a company is expected to earn against its market value per share. And uh, the ratio here is calculated by taking the free cash flow per share divided by the current share price. So th that, that sounds a little um, too academic probably, but that means nothing more than the higher the free cash flow yield, the more likely a company is generating enough cash to easily satisfy its debt, but not just the debt, but also other obligations in this context including dividend payouts. And what we've seen here is a switch from negative territory and uh, well, how can we say that? Cash burning um, um, at, a, at a high rate when it came to mining stocks, now into positive territory. Um, and this is um, important to note because some might argue, okay, well, if you talk about cash flow, having some part of your portfolio in precious metals, physical um, um, gold, physical silver, Okay, fair enough. But this is not generating cash flow, and this is a this is a very good point because we refer to this now several times. And what's um, certainly of interest then is to look for highly positively correlated asset classes, or in this case, stocks to the gold price, to silver mining stock, um, um, to to silver, and you find this naturally in uh, companies who are mining gold and silver. So. But if these companies have now um, this switch into the positive free cash flow yield um, a territory, well, that means uh, that they're likely to pay a dividend, at least a small one. So you have a highly positively two gold correlated um, investment, which is generating a cash flow, which is not necessarily the case once you invest directly in physical gold, for example, or silver. And uh, that's also something to, to take into um, uh, to, into account. What's the time um, scale on the graph? Um, that here that you can see that's 9095 so the last 25 years in this context so um i think around this time here when it started it was also the time when barrick gold went public i think that was when the ipo happened i think it was the early 90s if i'm not mistaken um so Barry Gold, by the way, is, is one of the uh, big players in this mining industry, uh, beside Newman, for example. I think Barrick and Newman um, make up something like 25% of 
I'm not mistaken, I'm not really sure about the um, weight right now, but I think they make up something like 25% in the um, GEX. This is the FUNAC gold mining um, um, sector ETF in this context. You can also diversify here your investments by investing in such an ETF. And now let's come to the last part of this. And um, in this context to the invest in yourself. I think this is the thing. So it does not really need um, any further explanation what this is, uh, what, what, I'm, what I'm talking about here. So investing in yourself can happen in different ways. Um, develop your skills, advance your ed education, utilize available trading like this webinar. You already do this, but it's, it's not just related to trading or investment or something like that, but also in addition to that, um, it's also meaning that you should invest in yourself when it comes to, for example, your working field you're currently in. That doesn't uh, probably trading is just um, a hobby. Let's put it that way. Um, and and you, you'd like to give it a deeper look, but still, um, um, this is not your, your, your main source of income, respectively. This is not your, your main working field. So um, advance your education comes true to everything. So try to, to become an expert, find a niche, become an expert within that niche. And um, so to put it in, in that way, I mean, in my, in my case, it's trading, obviously. So I'm in, in trading, um, but this is exactly what I did. So I am uh, not the one saying, okay, I offer my knowledge to an audience like you, or I'm also offering coaching and, and mentoring to, to guys who are interested in learning more about trading itself. But I'm not just offering that. I want to become better myself. And I'm also looking for mentors people who are more experienced in this industry. So I'm in this industry for 20, for, for 15 years. I'm looking for someone who is in this industry for 25 years, for 30 years, who has more experience, probably lived through a recession in this case, lived through such an environment. Not sure whether there's, there, there's an environment which is comparable, um, but but this is something you, you should definitely think about. Find really ways how to get better in what you're currently doing and advance your, your education. Um, also, very important, uh, something, well, I think my wife is, is responsible for that, especially. So explore your creative side. Um, learn a new language, for example. Learn how to dance. Write a, write a, write a blog, for example. Um, explore the outside world. Um, um, go out and, 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 and then explore nature, explore trees, and something like that. Um, this is... Uh, in case, let's go back here probably and, and, and probably make it more trading related. But this is something you shouldn't underestimate. For example, that's already has it already took place um, um before uh this 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 pandemic hit. But <clears throat> I um um I'm a very quantitative guy, but still I lack some serious knowledge, lacked some serious knowledge when it came to uh, programming or coding skills, and which can be of high interest for us as traders, certainly too. Um, you probably have seen several webinars within this Trading Spotlight webinar series where we uh, discussed, for example, um, uh, goal trading strategies, which I programmed in Python. I used these webinars um, to um, on my skills, which I acquired over the last months here when it came to programming in Python, for example. So I'm not just talking about learn a new language and then um, learn Spanish or French or Italian or something like that, but also coding languages like Python, which can also increase your overall um, um, likelihood to become more profitable in your trading. That's also something which can not just um, 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 be, a, be something to focus on, but also something which is um, um, achievable from a monetary perspective, because you find plenty of input, not just on YouTube, but by the way, if you like the video, um, please leave a thumb up here and uh, um, um, uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel from, from Admirals. <laughs> that would be nice. Um, but not just the YouTube videos you can find, but in addition to that, there's also um, courses for something like 100 euros or something on um, Udemy, for example, or Teachable, for example. So there's plenty of, of resources you can, you can use here and get your hands on and get access to and learn a new skill, which can um, really bring you forward in your overall um, um, being, in fact. And this is also something, I mean, there's people out there are wondering, hey, if you're so skeptical about the euro, um, if you're so skeptical about the whole monetary policy um, um, experiment we're currently facing, well, where should I invest my money in? Should I buy gold? Should I buy real estate? Should I buy this and that stock? Or, well, all this makes sense as we found out over the last minutes, but 
um, something which will definitely not decrease in value, but increase in value, even then something if you invest in yourself. He, he, no one will, will ever take this away from you. If you have money in your bank account, I'm not saying that you should take all the money and, and, and invest it um, in, a, in an online course or in a coaching, mentoring or whatever, but I'm, I'm just saying um, take part of that and you invest it and it's not lost, but it's something which will grow over time within you if you continue to, to, um, um, yeah, to, 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 to to help it grow, to grow with it over time, um, and this is this is um, the best investment you can you can in fact do, especially during a recession. And once the recession is over, uh, you'll be way ahead of the pack, and and you can just go out and say, hey, it's not just that I grew as a person. Uh, by the way, this is the the third um, um, aspect: nurture your mind and body in this context. Um, but in addition to that, you have a qualification, you have skills everyone else is lacking because everyone else was getting depressed. It's not that it's a nice environment right now. I'm not, don't get me wrong. But um, all in all, uh, being locked up at home, well, do something with your time. I could easily sit in, uh, in, in front of a screen now and, and, and eat um, uh, chips and, and fast food and whatever um, and, and, and zap through Netflix. Or I could, for example... Do something like learning how to meditate. Before I started this webinar here, 30 minutes before, I went uh, through 10 minutes of meditation. It was, it's just awesome. I feel like I, I'm flying right now. It's awesome. It's just beautiful. Um, there's also another thing. Um, there's a, an app which is called Brain HQ. So first of all, the, the meditation um, app you can, you can um, get access to here is Headspace. Um, the next one is Brain HQ. It's like um, I'm training your cognitive strengths, your cognitive skills. And why is this of importance? I mentioned this during um, a coaching I just did for uh, the Australian clients from Admirals um, this week, respectively last week. There was a question on scalping. And um, now the question is, is everyone a scalper? It depends on your cognitive strengths. Um, and think, thanks to um, apps like BrainHQ, you, you can find out your cognitive strengths. It's not just that you can that you can cultivate them and, and you can build new cognitive strengths and, and, and really stay um, um, cognitive um, strong in this context, but you can also find out whether um, you really have what it takes to be a successful scalper, quick decision taking, or if you want to take quick decisions, which is so important when it comes to scalping and, and short term trading. Um, well, is there a certain state you need to be in? So in my case, for example, I'm not a scalper, but I'm very confident that I could be profitable scalping the markets. So I know how to do that. It's, it's, um, I, I know the techniques and what it, what it really takes. But and this is the thing. Um, I know, thanks to, for example, this app Brain HQ in this context, I know that I have to be in a certain state of mind to perform at my highest level when it comes to quick decision making. And uh, this is something you can, in this context, really find out. It's not just that you nurture your mind and body that way and, and continue to work out. You can also work out at home. It's not the same as going to the gym. It's definitely not the same um, since I, for example, go out uh, to the gym or went out to the gym with a friend and, and had fun together. We talk to each other. Um, we, we are we are the best friends in the world. So um, um, and and. Still, it's, it's like, well, we, we can't see each other right now, not in the gym. We can talk to each other, we can call each other, but it's not the same. Um, but you can still try to make the best out of that and use, for example, techniques like meditation, headspace in this context, cognitive strength, um, and build this, these cognitive strengths, work out at home, and, and nurture your mind and body. And once this is over, once rather sooner or later, it will be over, and you will come out you will come out better than you went into that. And, and this is something which will, which will give you an advantage, not just in, in, in trading in general uh, and knowing what to focus on. If you know, thanks to Brain HQ, that you have to be in a certain state of mind to be profitable in scalping the markets, um, thanks to such an app, which also an um, advantage when it comes to trading um, and an edge you finally have, but also in, in, in life in general. It's not just a, um, um, your portfolio will thank you, but um, uh, will thank you for, but also which um, your overall environment and, and the people you surround yourself with will thank you for because um, you will be yeah, to some extent different and better, really better um, in, a, in a positive um, um, sense and not um, be ahead of them, um, 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 but, but better because you um, make them feel comfortable in your um, direct, direct um, um, 
environment. So that's it on the um, aspects on what to invest in a recession or what to look for, what investments to look for. Um, so, oh, that's not so good. Um, let me just open here a slide uh, be before we come to the, the uh, um, uh, we come to the summary. I, I just want to open admirals.com. Uh, and the reason for that is simple because I just saw that the next slide is, um, is not um, updated. Um, so this is on the on the next topic we will focus on. But first of all, the summary. So a recession, um, as we defined it here, is um, uh, two consecutive quarters of negative economic growth. Thus, this is an extended period of significant decline in economic activity. Very technical. And during a recession, um, there are several areas you can invest in. We looked at the core sector stocks, health, for example, um, 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 consumer staples. We, we looked here in this context at um, um, food. We looked at a basic transportation, but also um, in, into, into um, entertainment, so Netflix. Then we should focus on reliable dividend stocks. In this context, uh, the dividend aristocrats, the link I shared within the chat box is um, of interest for you in this context. Also dividend um, aristocrats ETFs. Real estate. We focus on here purchase precious metal investments, not just physical, but also probably mining stocks like gold, silver mining stocks, and invest in yourself. I think this is probably the most important part, at least for me right now. Um, and and um, if you invest in yourself, you you do something, you definitely get a positive uh, yield on. You will see short-term capital depreciations during a recession. Also, if you if you focus on reliable stocks or core sector stocks, probably these will perform better than heavily um, 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 elevated growth title, um, which will see sharp drops and sharper declines. Um, and still, um, they will probably come out ahead over time here, and, and, and you will probably see some, some growth in your, in your um, investment over time. But investing yourself will definitely yield um, a positive uh, um, yield. It's, it's like, it's, it, my personal opinion is you have really no, this is, this is like the holy grail of investment. If you invest in yourself, you can't lose. That's just um, something I'm 100% um, 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 sure about. And uh, so that's it. That's it on, the, on, on today's topic. Um, let me just um, add here to, let me just see. Oh, no, I need to quicker here. So these are the contact details from Admirals. And um, before I will go to the risk disclaimer, first of all, next webinar will take place. If you look here at the Educations tab and Forex and CFD webinars, and um, they will see the next will take place next week, Wednesday, on the they can see it, 7th of April, and it's me. <laughs> Again, it's electric vehicle stocks, Tesla, NEO, XPath, who's hot, who's not. After today's delivery numbers, we can certainly be sure um, that uh, Tesla is definitely hot right now. <laughs> probably off the races now and see 800 in a few in a few days, probably on before Wednesday, let's see. But um, you can register here. So I just shared a link in the chat box. And um, I hope that you, that you will join us again next week then on Wednesday. Um, and we want to end this webinar here with a risk disclaimer. And that's it from my end. So happy, happy trading. Today is um, a good Friday. So have a nice Easter weekend and talk to you again next week on Wednesday. I definitely look forward to it. Have a nice one. See you.